Hey everybody, uh, this is working with strings part two. Accessing a character in a string. So let us consider the case of wanting to access a specific character from within a string, remembering that strings are zero indexed and relatively straightforward. I think we did this before. So here's one version where we're accessing it using uh, numbers for the indexes. So name, Robert Smalls. If you don't know who Robert Smalls is, you might want to look him up. Um, from the Civil War era, very, very interesting story. Um, and one of those stories that just kind of puts a smile on your face. So if we think about it, the first character is gonna be located at the zeroth index, which can be kind of confusing, but you really just want to adhere yourself towards a, uh, like a paradigm for that. Either call it the zeroth character or the first and, and, and keep that consistent. If the first character is at zero, just be consistent with that and, and well, you'll probably be okay. So the eighth character is gonna be name at seven. And if we console.log both of those, we're gonna get R and then S for the zeroth or first and seventh or eighth character. So if we run that, we'll see R and S. Now we've got another example where instead of a number index, we're going to assign a variable to a number and then access the uh, a character from within the string using that variable. So same idea, Robert Smalls, listed him twice because he's just that cool and variable index is going to be equal to one, so that we can say second character is equal to name at index. If we log this to the console, we're going to see that we got a small o, because that's the second letter, or the character at index one. So again, keeping that name inconsistent is going to do you a lot of favors. Now that we have that sorted out, let's talk about the coding challenge. We're going to complete a function that takes two parameters, a string and a numerical index, and returns the character in the string located at the numerical index. Your function should create a variable and assign it to an expression which accesses the character, which accesses the character located at the numerical index, then return that variable. Um, I kept this paradigm going for almost the entire thing. Uh, it might seem kind of awkward, but you want to consider that we're always talking about the variable that we create when we say then return that variable, um, mainly because this part is going to get much more complicated as we go. But that's kind of on purpose, right? We're doing the same thing over and over again, and we're just gently layering in more and more complex versions, but keeping most of the sort of, um, you know, structure of what we're doing consistent. Anyway, below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function access a character. So result character, access a character computer at index three, and it should be P, which is zero, one, two, three. So that looks good from a glance. Uh, now that we have our function, let's go ahead and copy the function stub, bring it back over to our replet, go ahead and copy the test case, and then have a look at what the function wants us to do. So here's our pseudocode. It says create a result variable, assign it to an expression that accesses the character within the string at that index. That seems relatively straightforward, given, of course, what we said in the documentation here. Um, to access uh, a character from within a string, we're going to say the name of the string, and then whatever... Um, index we're looking for. Now in this case the index is a variable so this is probably going to be the basis from which we complete the function. So variable result is going to be equal to string at index and then we're going to return result. So if we run this and we get p we know that we are at least somewhat correct. Let's copy the function, bring it back to the input window and see if it passes all the tests. Ah, and we are in advantageous aspect. Okay, I still like in good shape better, but it's always good to change things up. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.